Okay, so here we are back in our bridge scene. You'll see that I've added a directional light and an ambient light in order to get a little bit of a better lighting setup for our hardware 2.0 render. And you'll also see that if I hit render right now, the render we get out of hardware 2.0 is gonna look very similar to what we're seeing in our viewport. However, there are a couple of differences. One of them is that all of these extra little items that are not renderable, such as the light object or the NURB circle that goes around the car, those are not showing up in the render. Also, our anti-aliasing and stuff like that is going to be a little better. You'll notice that our render time in this image was one second, and that's for a 960 by 540 image. When I render a 1920 by 1080 image for the full HD resolution, it's taking about three seconds per image. Let's click this button right here to temporarily save a copy of this render so we can refer to it later. Now I'm going to change this to the Arnold renderer and see what a render out of Arnold looks like with the same lighting setup. The first thing you'll notice is it's much slower. But a lot of the lighting information and reflection information is also a little bit better as well. We're able to see some reflections in the car and we're getting some better bounce light underneath the bridge and in these crevices. However, we're doing it at the cost of several seconds per render. So one image rendering in Arnold is taking about seven seconds. And at 1920 by 1080, it was taking about 32 seconds an image. 32 seconds times 120 images can really add up over time. So for this example, I'm going to use hardware 2.0. But if you have a computer or some extra time, feel free to render out of Arnold and try to get a really nice looking image sequence. So I'll switch back to hardware 2.0. Now the question you may be asking yourself is how am I going to render all 120 of these images? Do I have to hit that render button 120 times? And the answer to that is no, Maya has a process that will automate rendering all of these images in our timeline. It's called batch rendering. We'll look at that here in a few minutes, but before we do, we're going to go ahead and open up our render settings and make some changes there. The first thing you'll notice is that our render is set to hardware 2.0. If yours is set to something different, then go ahead and set it to hardware 2.0 now. However, no matter what render you have selected, the common tab stays the same. And that's where we're gonna be doing most of our changing today. You'll notice directly at the top of the common tab, we have a lot of information. And this is about the image and image sequences that we're getting ready to create. The first thing you'll notice is the path in which these images are going to be created. It is under my bridge folder, under the images folder. Maya knows to place the images there because we set our project earlier. If yours is pointing to a different path, then you need to set your project now. This is a very important step because otherwise Maya may render those images to a local drive on a computer and you may not be able to find them later. To set my project again, I go to File, Set Project, and I'll point to the Bridge folder and hit Set. Now the next thing you'll notice under the common tab is the file name. And mine's kind of long and complicated. Greg Marlowe, bridge reconstructed .0010.iff. And once I start rendering an image sequence, it would tack an additional number at the end of that as well. So let's try to simplify this. The way we do that is go to our file name prefix and we just type in the name we would like our image to be here. I'm going to call mine bridge render. I'm going to hit enter. You'll see it simplifies that naming convention a little better. Now the next thing you'll notice is the .iff file. Now what is an IFF file? IFF is Maya's proprietary image format. However, it's kind of out of date and obsolete now. So we're gonna change our image format to something that is a little more useful. So we're going to use a PNG sequence. 
Now, we're using a PNG instead of a JPEG because PNG has a little bit more information and it also offers an alpha channel. So we'll talk about the alpha channels a little bit later. Now you'll see that the file name is bridgerender.png. However, that's just one image and we need to render 120 of them. Now, if you go down to frame range, you'll see that the frame range is grayed out. And that's because so far we've told Maya that we're only rendering one image. If we go to frame animation extension, you'll see that it's set to name this file, the name, and then the extension, bridgerender.png. And that's for a single frame render. I have to change this to a different naming convention if we want a series of images. The big thing to remember here is that you want the extension to be at the end. So name.number extension, name number extension, or name underscore number extension. Don't choose either of these two that has the number at the end because that will actually confuse the software that is going to open this image sequence later. I'm gonna choose name underscore number dot extension. Now what you see will happen when we do that is the frame range section becomes editable and up at the top, now we have two different file names. It's going to render from bridge render underscore 001.png to 0010.png. That's just 10 files, so I need to make sure we're rendering all 120 images. And now you'll see that it's bridge render underscore 0001.png to 0120. You'll notice directly below that, our image size is set to 960 by 540. And that's pretty low resolution for an HD image. So let's go ahead and scroll down and change our image size to something more high definition. So instead of HD 540, I'm gonna choose HD 1080. And now you'll see that the image size has been updated. The last thing we wanna change is we wanna make sure we're rendering from the correct camera. And you'll see right above image size, we have our renderable camera. It's currently set to perspective, but as you'll remember, we animated the render cam camera. So let's change the renderable cameras to render cam. I'll close the render settings, and I'll go ahead and increment and save to save those render settings in case something happens and I need to re-render the file later. Now, to render this entire sequence, we need to make sure that we're in the rendering menu, and we'll go to render and batch render. Now before I click this, I'm going to open up my script editor just so we can see what happens when we render. When I go to render, batch render, notice both my script editor and the command line at the very bottom of our screen. Batch render, first it'll tell us it's rendering with Maya Hardware 2.0. This will take a few seconds. And then when it starts rendering the first image, it will tell us the percentage of those images that it has done. Now, if these images were taking longer to render, it would tell us more increments of the percentage. As you see, it is creating these images in our images folder. And if we were to go open our images folder, we would see they are being created. Now, there was one thing we forgot to do and this will be a... Now just from looking at these images, I can tell that there was one thing we forgot to do. So let's go ahead and cancel this render. If I go to render, cancel batch render, it will ask if I'm sure, and I'll say yes, and it will go ahead and cancel the render here. Now the reason I did this was because these images are rendering a little too dark. If we notice the image in our viewport, the green is kind of light, but in this image, it's coming out much darker. The reason for that is because a PNG is kind of limited in the amount of color that each image can contain. So let's go ahead and delete these images, and let's make a change in our render setting to fix this. Under our render settings, 
you'll see that all the way at the top, we have this option that says apply output transforms to renderer. Now you don't need to turn this on if you're rendering to an EXR sequence, but if you're rendering to a JPEG or a PNG sequence, we do need to turn this on. Now notice what happens if I just render a single image. This image is coming out much brighter than we're seeing in our viewport. However, if I render this as an image sequence, the images that will come out will look exactly the way they do in our viewport. So again, I'll save this scene and do render, batch render. And there we go. And now it's creating the images. And if we look at those images in our folder, they're going to be much closer what we're seeing in Maya.